Bounds nine assists through his first 10 games of the postseason. So, I, I mean, are the Nuggets the most complete team left? Yes, yes. Yeah. No, they not. They have a few complete teams. Like they say, they, she asked who the most complete team is. I, I, I just can't agree with that. I believe okay, the Lakers see. have a complete team. I believe that the Celtics and Philly both have complete teams. I mean, what is your definition of a complete team? I, I think a team that has look, look I, again, we're splitting hairs here. I, I understand. <laughs> You're I, we're not splitting hairs, hairs ever. <laughs> Are you okay? Can we, can we okay. go ahead, Rich? Like I was saying before the round mound over here started interrupting me, <laughs> what I'm trying to express is this. The Denver Nuggets are playing the best basketball that they should be playing right now against a very good Phoenix team that's got tier stars. The issue right now with the rest of the team, they're not playing great. Boston's not playing great. The Lakers are playing well. Lakers are playing well. But when you look at depth, when you look at multiple shooting, they got lots of shooting. That's what the Denver Nuggets have been beating the Phoenix Suns with. They have depth off their bench. They have multiple players in mo at, at multiple positions. I understand we're talking about the teams in the postseason, so everyone's very complete. But when I look at the team that was the number one seed from December on and the way they have played in the postseason, to me, that is the most complete team that is playing the best basketball. And look, Caesars agrees with me. Well, on the other side of things, so we have the Suns on the brink of elimination. Do they have enough, Richard, to get it done? Do the Suns? Yeah. I think they have enough to get one more game. I don't know if they have enough to get this series done, but just because when you look at on the road, and, and we talked about role players play better at home. Well, no one really showed up. Terrence Ross had a couple of plays there late in the fourth where he hit a couple of threes, but they weren't getting any production. They weren't getting the same production they got in game three and four from, from you know, uh, Warren and Sham. They weren't getting that production. And if, if, the, if the Suns win in game six, game seven, I would look for that trend to continue and say that in that elevation, when you've got to play 45 plus minutes, that's hard on Devin Booker. That's hard on Kevin Durant because you don't get a break. You don't have help and you're playing at elevation. Well, I, I believe Kevin Durant has to play better and help Devin Book out, but is that Kool-Aid y'all drinking in y'all? Because, you know, I spy everything. I spy everything, and I've been spying Kool-Aid, somebody heart-pumping Kool-Aid, okay? Who's, who's yeah, heart Yeah, I spy Kool fear. Ooh. Here you go, new segment coming in play. I spy. I'm kidding. Perk's good. Yeah, perk the perk. I, I'm just saying, when I'm sitting down and I'm watching these games, I'm watching everything, I'm watching details, and I spy a problem. I spy fear. I see a guy heart that's pumping Kool-Aid and DeAndre Ayton. And the one thing is that the film no lie. Let's run it. Why are you yelling at the screen? I got to. Here we go right here. <laughs> we know that up? this pin down is happening. Look at the effort. No physicality. But watch the coaches over there mad. You see that? They mad because they didn't win over it. Here it is. Athletic DeAndre Ayton. Jokic that can't do a calf race. How does he beat you down the floor? That is effort. Okay? Here's the fear part of it. You're guarding the best player on the floor. KD has Aaron Gordon. Why are you coming with a semi-help to leave Jokic, who just torched you for 50, to give up the N1? Check out KD body language. He, he's disgusted. I spy. <laughs> I see it. I see everything. Nothing get past me when it comes down to the postseason. I like I like I spy. I look, I'm a look, fan of this. I will I, I like yeah, the go ahead, do you. I like the segment purely for the open. <laughs> <laughs> open alone. You hiding behind them little bushes like nobody can Shout see out it. to producer Jerry. Yeah. <laughs> you know can I try this? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, you know, let me I see if I got this. Wear those damn loafers. What's wrong okay. with my loafers? I spy some what's, loafers. What's wrong with my loafers? You know what else? Oh, Perk, you see it? And I, I spy Embiid. Jokic continued to show why he's a two-time MVP with yet another triple double. I think you guys won the Jimmy Butler debate. Finishing with 29 points, 13 rebounds, and 12 assists as the Nuggets took a 3 2 lead in the series. This was the Joker's 10th playoff triple double, passing Wilt Chamberlain for the most by a center in postseason history. Guys, as I was saying, KD LeBron is the sexy matchup. KD ought to be the GOAT. Right? When you really look at what he can do, he ought to be the greatest player of all time. He's not. He's not even in the conversation, let's be honest. And the only time he's ever won a championship, in spite of being on a lot of great teams throughout his career, his long career at this point, is when he joined a 73-win team that could not lose, like Steph, him, Clay, everyone. Of course they couldn't lose. 
It's not the same thing as leading a team to a championship. And as Charles Barkley says he wants them to be the bus driver, yeah. Like, KD, this Suns team is good enough. You got enough with you. You got enough with you that you can chip up right now. Let me see you do it. You know, KD's better than Larry Bird, right? But he's not. He's not like that. When you talk about the greatest players of all time, you think about a guy like Bird before you think about a guy like KD. It should not be that way, but it's that way. I want to see him do it right now. Nick, what do you make of KD and the Suns? But he can't do it right now because this is a flawed team. And it's a flawed team because they gave up all their depth to get him. Sure. There are a lot of people that are always going to blame Kevin. In this specific situation, though, guys, he doesn't deserve the blame in that they don't have a lot of other answers. You know what you're getting from Kevin night tonight. You know what you're getting from Devin Booker. You don't know what the hell you're getting on the rest of that team. We haven't even talked about DeAndre Ayton. He's been terrible most of this series. So this is a Phoenix team that still has to build in the next year or two. They're just not ready for everything think right LeBron, now. You'd be saying that if LeBron had Devin Booker and DeAndre Ayton, or you think LeBron might figure out a way to get the most out of DeAndre Ayton? See, I think that LeBron has got the guys on his group to believe, but that team, after the deals they made at the deadline, has a lot more depth Legs, than Phoenix Nick does. makes a good point. A lot of times when you clean out the roster to get a like guy like yeah. KD, it's always a good idea. It takes a year or two to stack it, back, stock it Absolutely. back up, the, the, the reserves and the bench and the other starters. Yeah. What do you think? You mortgage your depth for this situation, and I said it when they got him. Yeah, look, every year you have Kevin Rant, you expect to win a championship. That should be your goal if you have him on your roster. Truth is, it won't be a failure this year. It'll be a failure if he doesn't win one at some point in Phoenix. And he's got more time to do that. He and Booker are both locked up. Now it is, how, how creative can they get to build a team around him that actually could win the championship or win the West? Because if he can do that and lead that team to the championship that he, he is missing from his resume, it's very important for Kevin Durant to be able to do that. And I think there's going to be more time because he's paired with the perfect guy, I think, for I can't, him to play I, I agree with that logic, but Bon Temps, year one, as soon as you gave LeBron AD, you got a chip. Well, it's the bubble. It's, again, a lot of excuses and explanations. I know we got a championship. Doesn't KD, like, KD not, never done it outside of Golden State? Kyrie and Harden, Westbrook, Ibaka, and all those guys. Now he's got Booker. And, by the way, DeAndre Ayton was the number one overall pick. There are excuses here? This entire discussion is ignoring the fact that Nikola Jokic has been incredible in these playoffs, and it goes back to something I've said a lot for the past month, which is Nikola Jokic came into these playoffs with the most pressure on him of any player in the league because all the excuses from the past couple of years, injuries, not having Jamal Murray, not having Michael Porter Jr., those are all gone. And Nikola Jokic has won the last two MVPs on the strength of his individual play, and he needed to show he could drive winning in the playoffs. Agreed. And the Denver Nuggets are winning this series because Nikola Jokic has been unbelievable. I just for as good as though you guys are telling me that Steph Curry has been as good as well, anybody. I know, but we're Why having this whole for LeBron. We're having this whole discussion right now about how disappointing it will be for the Suns to lose. They're losing to a guy who's outplaying Devin Booker and Kevin Durant in the series. On top of the fact that they have the depth around him that the Suns don't have. The Suns don't have the guys like Bruce Brown like Christian Braun, like Michael Porter Jr. They don't have K Contagious Caldwell Pope, Aaron Gordon. Aaron Gordon. The, okay, depth of, yep. Yep. the combination of Jokic playing to Devin Booker's level and the guys around them. Yeah, and him, Porter being healthy and Jamal Murray sure. being healthy. Porter, by the way, didn't wind up with 20 points. How's that possible? Last Denver was night? the number one seed yeah, in the West. Million threes. The first That's right. Four. Denver was the number one seed in the West. Yeah. They needed to win the series. They're in position to do it. We'll yep. see if they can. The NBA playoffs. Hey, what's up, guys? Jack from Jaggy Sports here. And we're going to get right into the Phoenix and Denver series. Denver blew out Phoenix last night in Game 5 to take a 3-2 series lead. Now, what I want to get into is DeAndre Ayton. Now, DeAndre Ayton hates it. Hates it in Phoenix right now. He can't stand it. There was a couple times where uh, CP3 um, pretty much tried to give him a high five. That wasn't happening. DeAndre Ayton blew him off. Um, in this series, he's like a minus 21, um, averaging minus 15 in all four games so far. All, sorry, all five games so far. And basically... He's saying he doesn't get the touches. He doesn't get the touches, and which rightfully so. We already knew this because the whole style of play changed the second Kevin Durant got traded to the Phoenix Suns because now you have KD and Devin Booker taking all the shots. So there is no 
barely any any shots for DeAndre Ayton. That's why he's so mad. So when they called, uh, when they got into a huddle, Devin Booker says you need to, need to play better, and KD said the same thing around those lines. So DeAndre Ayton took offense to that, stood up and just walked away. Stood up and walked away. That is the notion that is going to happen this offseason. Because there is no way that Phoenix doesn't trade DeAndre Ayton or tries to. And one suitor that really wants him is Dallas Mavericks. Now, the Dallas Mavericks have a point guard as in Kyrie Irving. So what could possibly happen here is you pretty much do a sign and trade with Kyrie Irving, sign him, and then trade him to the Dallas Mavericks in exchange for DeAndre in, and I'm guessing another pick or so. But that's pretty much what's going to happen because DeAndre Ayton hates it in Phoenix right now because he he he's not getting anything. He's playing horrible, right? And you just saw that they're talking about his heart and whatnot. So where is he in terms of this whole, you know, playoff mentality? I don't know. I just don't... I. I I just think that he wants out. DeAndre Ayton wants a trade, and we all know this, and it's gonna happen the second um, Phoenix Suns are done, right? The fact that remains is like, okay, if Phoenix Suns push it to a game seven, that's cool, but you gotta think to yourself, you have DeAndre Ayton so unhappy that everybody's mad at him. You had Monty Williams mad, mad, mad at him last summer. Now you got uh, Chris Paul, or uh, he's not high-fiving the guy, and then he walks up uh, out of a huddle. So at the end of the day, it's just a matter of time before DeAndre Ayton gets traded, and I honestly don't know who's gonna win this uh, series because it could, could go either way. Phoenix dominates at home versus the Denver Nuggets. Denver Nuggets can't pull it off in Phoenix as we saw in games three and four. So what's gonna happen in Phoenix? We have no idea. Leave a comment in the comment section. Tell me what you guys think. Who is gonna win the series? Who is gonna win game six of the Denver Nuggets and the Phoenix Suns series? And is DeAndre Ayton getting traded? Possibly Kyrie Irving trade, we don't know. That's just my opinion. Leave a comment in the comment section. This is Jag from Jaggy Sports.